Acadiana's Morning News. Rob Kirkpatrick in for Bernadette Lee today with Brandon sitting across the table and joining us on the phone, Senator Fred Mills. Good morning, sir. Good morning, guys. Good morning. So I think when we when we originally wanted to have you on last week... Yeah, we, I keep hearing some music in the background. I can't are, hear are we good? Are we good now? Oh, now I can hear you. Now all right, you. all right. Thanks. It was okay. like last time. I didn't know whether to talk or dance. I hey, it's my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to throw you off every time. <laughs> I know, Brandon. <laughs> I'm good sorry. Morning, no the best good part morning. is that it's radio, so no one can see you dancing. So do what you want. <laughs> talk or dance. I know. I know you wouldn't be able to eat your breakfast in the morning. <laughs> if you can. So originally we were going to have you on uh, last week. Uh, we, obviously, we had the big lead up to the governor's budget plan, his speech, and then things got crazy at the end of the week. And now we have something else to talk about as well. Um, let's we'll get to the budget. I, I just want to um, kind of get your thoughts on the passing of Justice Scalia. I know he he was a hunter. He actually spent a lot of time in Louisiana hunting you know, in in his time while he was there, uh, 79 years old. Uh, did you know him? Did you know of him? Or What were your thoughts? No, I, I didn't know him, but I, I did talk to several friends of mine that, that did hunt with him. In fact, just a few weeks ago uh, at, at the bank that I work at, one of the uh, employees there showed me a picture of her son uh, hunting with him said it was just a, a remarkable time. And what was kind of funny is I don't think he knew he was a chief justice. He just thought he was just a regular guy hunting. <laughs> and uh, and that's just South Louisiana. You know how we're all so colorful. But just, um, I mean, and in, in, in everybody I talked to, they just enjoyed his company. And he was just, uh, he enjoyed this area, it seemed like. He just really enjoyed South Louisiana and the culture and the food and the people and, and the, the, the gaming of, of being able to hunt wild game here. That's one of the stories uh, that I heard about him was he was up hunting somewhere, somewhere in St. Landry Parish. I'm not sure exactly where. Um, and, you know, got up early one morning and the person who owns the property took him in the truck, brought him to the blind. And and his security freaked. You can't bring the justice by exactly. himself with, no, you know, no security. Uh, so Exactly. Uh, yeah. And the other thing, knowing our people, I think a few of them said, look, I didn't know you were a judge. You think you can fix my ticket in, in St. Landry Parish? <laughs> <laughs> I think he has big, bigger things on his plate. Uh, so, Senator, uh, back to what we were going to ask you about last week. Uh, the, the big budget, what do you, hubbub, whatever you want to call it. We had the big budget speech on, on Thursday. We talked to the governor on Friday. Um, right. What do you make of it all, especially, you know, the direction? Obviously, you have your hand on the pulse of the people here and the people you represent. Uh, what do you think about, about this plan and how we move forward? Well, globally, I guess, and, and I think Friday I was supposed to be on right after the governor, and it lasted pretty long. So Bernadette said, what do we do to, uh, this morning? I, I guess the first thing is what I'm gathering is the governor and his staff are really trying to say, here's, here's our plan. Here's the revenue shortfall. Here's the, the cuts that I'm proposing. Do not, I do not want to make all these cuts. Here's what I'm proposing as far as either taxation or, or tax cuts or some modification. But what I guess I, I'm sensing from most of the Acadiana delegation, and not all of them, but it's like, no, before we even talk about any type of revenue enhancement, either from tax packages or credits or anything, you have to show us that spending has been cut to the bone. It's almost to the marrow. And, and once we see that, no, no one wants to close a university. No one wants to close a hospital. No one wants anybody on Medicaid that's in life support systems to be unplugged. But you have to show us exactly that the spending has been brought to a point where we, we are, are just as lean as we can be. And I guess that's where the disconnect I'm sensing from most of uh, the delegation of the administration is let's let's move forward. Let's start everything. It's like, whoa, hold up. Let's. Show me the spending cuts exactly. Well, and that's what I think the difference was. You know, on the on the John Kennedy side, his was all fix the spending, fix the spending, fix the spending. On the governor's side, which, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I agree with, but he explained it. He explained at least his thinking better on exactly. Friday than I had heard before, where he said the new revenue we have to get us out of the hole just to get us up to, you know, the, the regular, you know, get us up to the bar, and then we could start making the other changes. I don't know if I agree with that or not, but it was, it was he, he explained that side of it. Exactly, and if you watched uh, over the weekend joint budget met on on Saturday and Sunday, and that's what many of the legislators were saying is, listen, we're not sure even if we want to make some certain selective cuts right now, or or I'm sorry, the word 
should be universal cuts, a 5% kind of cuts across the board that they have the authority to do. But we still want to see more of, of the plan, more of what the plan brings. So I think everybody's working as hard as they can to find a solution. It's just what, what is the timing of the solution and what is it going to be? And if there is a solution on the tax side in its short term, there has to be a sunset on it. There has to be a provision that if we do decide to do certain things, it it's, it's almost resembles what Lafayette Parish did on the, on the airport tax. It, mm-hmm. it shows us that there's an end game and we have another discussion. Nothing automatically renews yep, yep, and, and we I talk agree. about it again. So right now, I guess there's some posturing going on. It, it's kind of funny because I told Bernadette I'd give a report from last night. And what I saw last night on the Senate side was when we, uh, when we called ourselves into session, there was maybe five or six people in the Senate chambers. When you, go to, you, when you went to the House, it was jam-packed. So you can tell that from a procedural standpoint, all the action is going to be on the House side because revenue and bills that enhance revenue or modify revenue have to start on the House side, and then the Senate gets that last look to it. So you could tell that for right now, everything was on that side of the uh, of the chamber, and on the Senate side, you, you could have roller skated in the Senate side. There were so few people there this last night. Wow. I'm just curious, because in, in a lot of the uh, discussion that we've heard from Governor John Bell Edwards, and we're speaking with State Senator Fred Mills this morning, a lot of the of what we heard was he talked about a balanced approach to the budget, talking about mixing in uh, a sp- uh, cut, spending cuts with uh, tax revenue, raising tax revenue. What are some of those spending cuts that you believe that could be on the table for Governor John Bell Edwards? Well, the only, I mean, the only spent, for, for sure the agencies, I'm sure there's some across the board cuts that will be recommended for every agency. And so every agency will absorb a 5, 10, 15, 20% cut. That would probably be what would be his, his, his choice as far as, as spending cuts. What makes it complicated, and we've talked so many times on this show is, and that's where everybody, on your, on your program, what everybody really struggles with is probably 80 cents of every dollar is health care or education. So your your bulk of it would be higher education, it would be health care, but I still think the public and I think a lot of legislators say, show me exactly where all of your expenditures are and when where they lie out there, we'll make those cuts. To tell you the specifics, I think that's where the debate is centered right now. Where are the specifics in the cuts? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's I, I think that a lot of it, especially around our area that is really seeing the difference, especially in the oil industry and the oil industry revenues and how that's going. Um, Do you think that there is anywhere, someone brought up to me over the weekend, we did this story about us not collecting from the casinos. And I think the number was around $19 million that the casinos should have given back to the state that that was just never collected upon. Is there any, is there any measure on that side to say, Hey, we have to also make sure we are getting every penny that we should be getting as well. Yeah, that that that's you know I can't tell you exactly on the casino side because I I did sit the last four years on Senate Finance, and that was a question we would always ask is okay here's your here's your revenues you collect and this was universal for every department here's your fees here's your whatever your permitting or whatever, and and that was a question and and um, let, but it, it scored. It scored kind of independently of how they're doing collecting. Mm-hmm. And we didn't see a, a lot of that. We did see the child support issue that the arrears of that are just incredible, but that's just a whole different discussion oh, on, yeah. on, on child support. But we didn't see a, a, a lot of that. We, we I, I can't I, I can't really say that I saw a lot of that issue. I don't. Okay, well, uh, State Senator Fred Mills, we appreciate you joining us. We will keep in touch with you throughout this special session, obviously wanting to know kind of what comes out of it, what you see, you know, from your eyes, and, and to bring that to our listeners as well. So we appreciate your time. Please do. Call anytime, and I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. Appreciate right. you all. Okay, thanks, Thank Senator. You.